Today, I want to talk about the new feature present in the latest EntopNG that allows you to characterize traffic behavior. This means that EntopNG is able to understand what is happening and to characterize it over time, to create a map of the services and to find out whether certain actions are repeated continuously at a certain pace. In order to enable that, you have to make sure inside the setting here, Preferences, Mish, that uh, this Traffic Behavior Analysis option is set and enabled. Remember that if you change this setting, you have to restart EntopNG in order this preference to have effect. What does it happen since enabling this preference? In essence, uh, for every network interface, so in this case I have just one, you will see some new icons. As you can see here, there are two new icons. Remember that it needs a little bit of time in order this to show up. And so that if you enable the preferences and you don't see something immediately, you probably have to wait a little bit until NTOPNG learns how the traffic is working in your network. The first icon here which shows services and actions that are executed periodically. Let's have a look. As you can see, my computer okay, is talking periodically with a remote website. I don't know why, but probably because you know the server itself is doing that uh, periodically, so at a certain frequency. So as soon as NTOPNG detects things happening at a certain frequency, where the frequency is more or less stable, so not just one activity every once in a while, but the something that is happening continuously for some time, then NTOPNG records this. And every hour it discards observations that are no longer uh, in use because the frequency is gone. And OpenG can store frequencies up to one day. So it means that every activity that is repeated at a frequency of one day or less is recorded. Here you can click on this wheel to refresh the activity. So in this case, you will see that my computer some time ago here has, uh, has performed a certain activity for a few times to, in this case, 7, and that my computer has done that at a certain frequency and is no longer doing that. This is called periodicity map. Why periodicity is important? It is because some activity, in particular malicious one, if they are repeated over time, this is a clear indication that something is wrong, simply because this activity is repeated at a certain pace, so it might be that there is a malware that is periodically performing a certain action, because malwares usually are pretty predictable from this point of view, and they don't execute action randomly, but they do them at a certain pace. Also, it is useful for detecting situations when people might have forgot a certain thing happening, like, uh, I don't know, uh, a server that uh, is doing a ping okay, towards a certain destination, or uh, somebody uh, is doing activities periodically. A typical example is network monitoring. If you have a network monitoring tool, you might have here actions executed every, every once in a while, but uh, uh, that are not executed uh, by chance, but because there is a, a monitoring tool that is doing that. This is the periodicity map. Of course, you can click on the link. Okay, if the link is enabled, so it means that this host uh, is, uh, is actually monitored. You can click on it to see the actions executed by this, uh, this host. As you can see, we are back to one, okay? Simply because uh, one action is no longer active, and soon probably even this one will be discarded, okay? The other icon is a little bit different. This one is created for, uh, for one dif different 
reason. In essence, we want to create the list of services or service map. This is important because in a network, connections between hosts are create, uh, created only because of a certain need. So for instance, if you have a web server, you are accessing this web server over port 80 and protocol HTTP or HTTPS. If you have a DNS, you are accessing this DNS over port 53 with the protocol DNS. So the service map applies only to local services, so it means that you have to specify inside the NTOMG configuration the list of local hosts because non-local traffic is discarded contrary to the periodicity map where here we record also non-local traffic. Here in the service map we take into account host talking each other. Okay. This is because we want to create a network of services and to understand who's talking to who for what reason. Like I've said before, this is useful to understand how a network is working, how the network is changing over time. So for instance, if there is a new connection happening that was not observed before, probably this is an indication of a new service that has been established and that is worth to be detected. So for instance, uh, suppose that somebody is installing on, on one server uh, a DNS server and suppose that NTOPNG is observing this traffic out of the blue. So this is a simple way with the service map to detect things that are persistent but that will be unknown to flows unless you click continuously on the flows and you understand what's going on. This is because this service map is kept in memory you can actually even download it. So if you click here, you will see you can download it in, in JSON format so that for, for uh, uh, better analysis if you want. And you can update it over time. As you can see, numbers are changing. Let's have a look at it. This one is uh, a service map working with the triplet concept. So we have the client host, we have the server host, and we have the destination port and layer 7 protocol. As you can see, we don't take into account the client port that is usually ephemeral. So it means that uh, we don't mind what port my MacBook has used when contacting the DNS server. The important thing is that the remote port and the remote protocol is persistent. It shows you how often this is happening and it shows you also some information about one of the things that have been requested by those users. So in this case, my host resolved some time ago this uh, uh, name, okay, and that's why it's called DNS Apple because this one is an Apple domain name. As you can see here, in addition to local hosts, we also take into account uh, multicast or broadcast host names, and this is important because we can uh, for instance, uh, keep track of services happening locally. There are some services such as Dropbox, for instance, that I use uh, a broadcast uh, IP address to discover peers. So this is uh, a good way of doing that. And if you click on those hosts here, you will see the service map focused on this host. And if you click back on this icon, okay, you will go back to the interface. Of course, you can flash data, so you can start over. And this means that NTOPNG has to learn new activities over time, again, as it did before. Remember that the service map applies only to localhost. Now, in a healthy network, the list of services must be static after a certain learning period. For this reason, we have introduced a mechanism for producing alerts when new services are detected. Let's see, okay, there's uh, already something new happening. So in order to do that, we have to go to the user scripts. There is a new script for the interface. This one uh, is available inside the interface tab, edit. 
This one is called lateral movement. So in essence, uh, we want to generate an alert when a new service is discovered. This one does not mean that this is an indication of a lateral movement in your network. So uh, it doesn't mean that somebody is doing malicious activity. But this information can be used for detecting lateral movement. This in particular for those hosts that uh, at some point are infected and start generating a lot of arcs towards hosts that have never contact. So a lateral movement happens inside a local network. If you enable this plugin that is enabled by default, and you go into the alerts, we can see, for instance, alerts like this that are the indication of that are the, the indication that a certain activity is happening. If you want, we have already covered this on a previous video. It is possible to specify endpoints and recipients for delivering those events to a remote end and then to uh, inform people about things happening. In a future end OpenG release, post version 4.2, we'll be improving this plugin so that it can have an automatic training period and can start emitting alerts when something is happening after a while and not immediately. Let's now recap. As you can see here, it's possible to have the periodicity map that are an indication of activities done by host over time. And it's possible to have the service map that it, it allows you to show what is happening in a certain network, what are the services happening, and why. So, for instance, in this case, it's a DNS. Something that you will probably appreciate is this one. Let's now click on this host. This host, as I've said, is a DNS. So, and OpenG is also able to detect it as DNS server. So, this is uh, a new icon that we just added recently. So, we hope that you enjoy this new feature with traffic behavior analysis. It is very important that you start learning more about your network and start to understand what is happening because there are some activities that are mostly hidden because they are short in time that can be detected with this facility that is persistent. So it means that uh, from one restart to another, NTOPNG keeps this information in memory and that allows you to download this information and to store or to send it to a different tool for better analysis such as a machine learning based tool. Thank you very much for listening.